It is generally agreed that Tiberius became more despotic over time, especially after the deaths of Germanicus, his political check, Drusus, his son, and Livia, his mother. When there was no one left whose shame mattered to him, he became more malevolent. In the words of Suetonius, little by little, he unmasked the ruler. But let us put ourselves in his shoes for just a moment. As to his childhood, Suetonius writes, he passed his infancy and youth amid hardship and tribulation. His mother, Livia, divorced his father and married Augustus while pregnant with the future Nero Drusus. Only Suetonius reports doubt as to Nero Drusus's parentage. Cassius Dio and Tacitus do not seem to doubt that Nero Drusus and Tiberius were biological brothers, full brothers. But Suetonius writes, Nero was born of Livia within three months after her marriage to Augustus, and there was suspicion that he was begotten by his stepfather in adulterous intercourse. Certain it is that this verse at once became current. In three months' time come children to the great. So whether or not this rumor was true is less interesting to me than to simply wonder what its impact was on Tiberius, who would have been a toddler at the time that he first heard it. The first attitude that we might detect lurking beneath that saying, workaday sarcasm, conveys to me a sense of abiding tolerance for the emperor's immunity to all legal and social aberration. So in a way, Tiberius is the one child of divorce who is exempted from what would otherwise be a little sympathetic. And secondly, that the birth of Nero Drusus, rather than being under a black cloud of adultery and scandal, was considered auspicious due to the superiority of his mother's new husband and his new stepfather. We can guess at the impact of this on Tiberius. At the age of nine, he delivered a eulogy of his dead father from the rostra. He has given Vespania in marriage. This is a daughter of Agrippa. After he had acknowledged a son from her, Drusus, although she was thoroughly congenial and was a second time with child, he was forced to divorce her and to contract a hurried marriage with Julia, daughter of Augustus. This caused him no little distress of mind, for he was living happily with Agrippina. For some reason, Suetonius refers to Vespania as Agrippina. And to add insult to this, the man whom Vespania is given claims Drusus for himself. Cassius Dio writes, Gallus had married the former wife of Tiberius and claimed Drusus as his son. Gallus will be murdered when Tiberius is emperor. Shocker. We already know that Julia turns out to be an adulteress. That's Augustus' daughter. We've already talked about her. And what happened to her was that she had sex with so many people while she was married to Tiberius that she was banished to the island of Pantateria. And while she was banished, the Roman people wanted her back. The Roman people wanted his adulterous wife back. When he was banished, no one wants him back. What is he thinking about the family of Augustus? And what's he thinking about these Roman people who will forgive any transgression committed by a member of Augustus's family so long as it is done against Tiberius? That's how he must have felt. And during his banishment at Rhodes, his life was threatened by a member of Gaius Caesar's staff. This is the stepson of the marriage forced on him, who is Augustus's grandson. How would you feel about your stepfamily? if you were Tiberius. There was a national affinity towards Augustus's family, a claim on them, a sense that if you were a Roman citizen, you could and should believe that you had a kind of ownership of them and kinship with them as Roman subjects. The royal family as political figures were adoptive parents of the entire country. After Germanicus's death, Tacitus writes this about his widow Agrippina. What upset Tiberius most was the popular enthusiasm for Agrippina, the glory of her country. They called her the only true descendant of Augustus, the unmatched model of traditional behavior. An unmatched model of traditional behavior. That's got a sting. He's had traditional marriage and a traditional family ripped from him. 
Tiberius must have felt like a neglected, unloved bastard, an unclaimed child. In thinking about this and the impact upon his psychology, the best word I could come up with to describe how he must have felt is a sense of disassociation, a feeling like it was preferred not to acknowledge him and not to associate with him. That no one said, there is Tiberius and he is one of us and his contribution and his participation in the state's constitutes an exercise of the right arm of the body politic of which I am also a part. No, he must have felt like an alien element to which the rest of the body was indifferent, if not hostile. What a recipe for the creation of a tyrant. So now turning to the early days of his rule, he was very reluctant to call himself emperor and he irritated people in the process because he wielded the powers without taking the title and it was a little ridiculous Suetonius writes though Tiberius did not hesitate at once to assume and to exercise the imperial authority he refused the title for a long time with barefaced hypocrisy finally some lost patience and one man cried out in the confusion let him take it or leave it so Cassius Dio has this long description of how he was. So let's just take some parts of this. Cassius Dio is growing on me. He never let what he desired appear in his conversation. And what he said he wanted, he usually did not desire at all. On the contrary, his words indicated the exact opposite of his real purpose. He denied all interest in what he longed for and urged the claims of what he hated. And then Cassius Dio continues, Now if he had merely followed this method quite consistently, it would have been easy for those who had once come to know him to be on their guard against him, for they would have taken everything by exact contraries. But, as it was, he became angry if anyone gave evidence of understanding him, and he put many to death for no other offense than that of having comprehended him. There was one person, however, to whom he was a little clearer, and that is Lucius Aelius Sejanus, the commander of the Praetorian Guard loyal to the emperor. Tacitus writes, To Sejanus alone, the otherwise cryptic emperor spoke freely and unguardedly. Sejanus would plot to murder Tiberius's son, Drusus. However, Tiberius is not going to learn this until much later. It is after the death of Drusus, in 23 AD, that things start to get bad. As Tacitus writes, This, the year in which Tiberius' rule began to deteriorate. 